This is a regular dodecahedron. If we count its vertices, we get 20. Looking at its edges, we see that there are 30. Finally, the name dodecahedron tells us that it has a total of 12 faces. Therefore, if we take the number of vertices, subtract the number of edges, and then add the number of faces, we get 2. Interestingly, if we complete this calculation for any of the five regular polyhedra, also known as platonic solids, we arrive at the same value of 2. In fact, the V minus E plus F equals 2 equation holds for any convex polyhedron. That is, a polyhedron for which connecting a point on one face to any point on any other face results in a line segment that lies entirely within the polyhedron. V minus E plus F equals 2 is called Euler's polyhedron formula, named after Leonhard Euler, who first published the result in the mid-18th century and was shocked that no one had noticed it earlier. There currently exist at least 20 different proofs of Euler's polyhedron formula. In this video, we'll take a look at a remarkably attractive and accessible proof from the mathematician William Thurston. We begin by disregarding metric properties such as lengths, areas, and angle measures, and note that we can create a particular type of two-dimensional representation of any convex polyhedron. Specifically, we can flatten out the polyhedron in such a way that the edges still meet only at vertices and do not cross elsewhere. In the field of graph theory, such a drawing is called a planar graph. Notice that with this planar graph, if we consider the space outside of the figure to be a single giant face, the interactions among the vertices, edges, and faces are identical to those in the original three-dimensional representation. So, analyzing the relationships between the numbers of vertices, edges, and faces in the planar graph is equivalent to doing so for the corresponding 3D polyhedron. Using the same flattening approach as we did for this dodecahedron, we can turn any convex polyhedron into a planar graph. But to visualize Thurston's approach to proving Euler's polyhedron formula, we'll use a simpler example of a cube. Here's how it works. Once we flatten the cube, we adjust the resulting planar graph such that it has no horizontal edges, and such that vertically it has a single highest vertex and a single lowest vertex. We can do so by moving the graph's vertices, as long as we're careful to avoid creating any new intersections. But we can also achieve the desired result here by simply rotating our initial graph. From here, we assign so-called charges to the graph's vertices, edges, and faces. We give each vertex a positive charge. Notice that if we think of each of these as a value of positive 1, adding them up would give us the number of vertices, V. Similarly, we attach a negative charge to each edge. Thinking of each of these as a value of negative 1, their sum would give us the negative of the number of edges, that is, negative E. Finally, we assign a positive unit charge to each face, including the large outer face. Adding these gives the number of faces, F. Therefore, if we add all of the charges in this diagram, we'd get the value of V minus E plus F which we wish to show is 2. At this point, we perform a procedure called discharging, which involves combining the charges in a specific way. First, we identify the uppermost and lowermost vertices. These two vertices will be ignored until the end of the discharging process. We then move each of the remaining vertex and edge charges onto the face directly to its right. For example, with our left face, the negative edge charge would enter the face and combine with the face's positive charge. Since positive 1 plus negative 1 equals 0, these two charges cancel out, giving a total charge of 0 for this face. Let's look at the upper face. Here, one positive vertex charge and two negative edge charges enter the face to combine with the face's positive charge. Since we have two positive charges and two negative charges, we again get a perfect cancellation, giving this face a total charge of zero. Perhaps you're wondering if this cancellation will happen for every face. It turns out that it will, and if we make sure every face in the graph is a convex polygon, it's not difficult to see why. If a face has only one edge charge entering it, it will not have any vertex charges entering. If there are two edge charges entering a face, there must be one vertex charge entering as well, namely the charge for the vertex connecting the two edges. Similarly, due to the alternating nature of edges and vertices, 
three edge charges would be accompanied by two vertex charges, four edge charges would be accompanied by three vertex charges, and so on. In general, the number of negative edge charges entering a phase is always one greater than the number of positive vertex charges entering that phase. Therefore, when we include the face's positive charge, the total number of positive charges equals the total number of negative charges, giving the perfect cancellation for a net charge of zero. Returning to the planar graph for our cube, we can confirm that the cancellations indeed occur for each remaining face. Once we've finally completed discharging with the large outer face, we see that the only two charges remaining in the diagram are those for the top and bottom vertices that we've been ignoring. Therefore, combining all the charges in the diagram gives a total charge of positive 2, which means that the number of vertices, minus the number of edges, plus the number of faces for our planar graph and thus also for our original cube, is 2. Lastly, we can imagine applying this method of discharging to any other convex polyhedron, showing that Euler's polyhedron formula, V minus E plus F equals 2, holds for any such figure with V vertices, E edges, and F faces.